Good morning, everybody. Late morning now. Welcome back. We're talking about more running backs here, and we're still talking about the guys who are at the top of this draft, relatively speaking. But um, now we're kind of getting down into the guys who I do pretty firmly believe should not be top two round picks. I think we're now down to guys who I clearly view as third round at best. And some of them not even that, but um, we've kind of gone down just a little bit here. I do expect the guys that we talk about in this video to go in the top 100, but I'm not convinced they should, and if they should, they should by a very small margin. So we're going to lead off with Blake Corum here, and this was a guy who I really liked during the season, but now I'm concerned. I've liked him less and less the more I've thought about it. Blake Corum, Michigan, 23 years old when the season starts. He's 205 pounds, which is okay, but he's 5'8". So this guy is small. Blake Corum is a small guy, but he doesn't really play like a small guy, which sounds like I'm complimenting him, and in some regards I guess I am, but in some regards I'm not. Like, um, I've, uh, I've cooled off on this guy significantly the more I looked into him. Sub 29-inch arms, 9-inch hands, I mean, that's not the end of the world, but... I'm looking at this, I'm looking at the Blake Corum thing, and I'm like, okay, he's 5'8". Five 5'8", eight. Five eight guys, what do they typically have? They typically have great speed, acceleration, explosiveness. Um, 40 time was slightly above average. 10-yard split was average. His vert was slightly above average. So the testing numbers don't tell you that he's all that explosive or quick or fast or anything. The areas he tested well in were the three cone. That's cool. Change of direction stuff. Uh, his 20 yard shuttle was really good. And his bench press was really good. So he's got power. So there is some stuff that's good here. But I'm also kind of wondering like, okay, when you're only 205 pounds and you're 5'8", you're in this very small package. How is this going to work? Are you going to be able to run with power in the NFL? Because Blake Corum, that's a... Uh, Seems like it's a part of his game that it's going to be hard to get away from. So I don't know about this one anymore. Uh, a few big boards have him in the third. A couple actually have him in the second. CBS has him in the fourth. The database has him in the third, so they're splitting the difference. If I had to guess, I'd say he goes in the third. <clears throat> but um, I don't know if I would be interested in making that happen if I were a team in the third round that needed a running back. Very productive the last two years. I'll say that you will not find a more productive running back, right? Over the last two years, rushing yards alone, it's over, yeah, it's over 2,700, uh, oh, close to five and a half yards a carry, and look at all these freaking touchdowns. The dude has 45 rushing touchdowns in the last two seasons, and that's, what, 29 games? So the dude has a nose for the end zone, and he's got some catching stats as well, Not nothing crazy, but he's made some plays in the passing game. So you won't find a more productive running back in college. He's, I think, capable as a pass catcher. The fact that he's got such low catching stats has more to do with how the team used him. He averaged less than a catch a game over the last two years, but it's whatever. I think he can do it. I think they just chose not to let him do it very often. He's got power. He can power through tacklers. He's got the ability to break tackles with his strength. And I'm sure some of that's going to transfer to the NFL. Don't get me wrong. Plants and goes with urgency. He makes his cut and goes, and he's pretty decisive about it, seeing the hole and going. He's good in pass protection, too, which that's going to add value, right? Some of the guys we were looking at before don't really have the pass protection down. That being said, I don't love his vision. I don't think his vision is all there. <coughs> I don't think he sees the field the way <clears throat> a guy like um, Brooks does. I don't know how he's going to be able to maintain this style of play. He's already got a ton of miles on him, by the way. Like, Blake Corum has had the wheels run off him at Michigan over the last couple of years. He touches the ball so much, takes a beating, and he's undersized, and now he's going to run with power at the NFL level. Maybe, but maybe not. And let's not forget, I'm not a big fan of this argument, but it is worth noting. I think every single one of his offensive linemen at Michigan uh, last year is going to get drafted. And you want to go back to 2022, Oluwatimi was also part of that offensive line. He got drafted, we know that. But he had a very good offensive line. And he um, 
he's not really going to be elusive in the open field. He's not going to be one of those guys who makes a lot of people miss. Not going to be a lot of guy who leaves a lot of people grabbing at his ankles while he takes off for a long touchdown. A pretty large majority of his rushing touchdowns have been inside the five-yard line. So he's kind of a short yardage back. So he's a short yardage back who is 5'8", 205 pounds. I know he's strong. That'll translate. But how long is he going to be able to take this beating? I'm not so sure. So I'm a little bit cooled off on Corum. I would wait for day three. I would wait for round four on him. I, I just, he strikes me as a guy who probably peaked in college and isn't going to recreate that success at the NFL level. So yeah, um, he was my number one running back for a while, but the more I looked at it, the more I was just like, I don't know. And then he measured at 5'8", and I'm like, now I really don't know. I feel like I can do better. I feel like I can do better at the position in this class. All right, so that's enough for Blake Corum. Let's take a look at another guy who's in this same rough range of this draft. Jalen Wright. Jalen Wright of Tennessee. Going to be 21 when the season starts. Five foot ten and a half, 210 pounds, so a little bit undersized, but he's fine. 31 and a half inch arms, 9 and 3 eighth inch hands. Speed was awesome. 4 3 eight, 40 is incredible. Now, acceleration didn't show up so great. 1 5 5 10 yard splits, okay, but it's not great. The vert was big and the broad was massive. He had one of the biggest broad jumps of any running back in combine history, so very explosive. And the big boards that he's on mostly have him in the third round, somewhere around the third, and so does the database. So third round pick seems like a reasonable guess at this point in time. Um, last year was kind of his breakout year, although he was good in 2022. Uh, last year had about 1,150 yards from scrimmage, 7.4 yards a carry, so very efficient. Only four touchdowns, but he also had the 22 catches, so he's making some stuff happen out of the backfield year before that, he actually had 10 touchdowns and was still really good, but 2023, he kind of put it all together, I feel like, showed what he could do as a pass catcher as well. <clears throat> so it's pretty obvious what makes Jalen Wright appealing. His top end speed is super good. He can fly. You get him in the open field, you're not chasing him down. He's very elusive as well. He's not just a straight line speed runner. He can jump cut. He can juke. He can misdirect you he can make things happen with his wiggle after just getting free via his speed so he's got moves he's got great hands as well very few drops threat as a receiver all day he'll be a great pass catcher in the nfl i think you want to use him in that way you're going to get a really good player and he does run with a little bit of power again i don't think it's going to translate great but he does have some understanding of how to lower his shoulder and just go bang out a few yards. Um, I think this guy would be a great fit for an outside zone running scheme. Just get him the ball sweeping wide, let him wait for the hole to open up, and then just boom through it. So Jalen Wright, a lot of stuff to like here. He's an exciting, fun prospect. There are a couple of things that are worth bringing up when you're talking about Jalen Wright, though. He does kind of play standing straight up which means that when he gets hit, he kind of crumples. He just kind of goes down. So if he could maybe learn how to play a little bit lower, keep his center of gravity lower, he could probably stay up a little bit better. So I don't know how much the power is going to translate. His vision and decision-making is sometimes a little bit suspect. He does do the dancing thing. He does sometimes pick the wrong way to go. There are some things that he's leaving out there on the field with his decision-making and with the way that he plays, if he could just get the vision, he'd really have something. He fumbles a lot. I think he had four fumbles last year, and it's not like he got the ball that much. So he's got to work on ball security. If you're going to be a fumbler at the NFL level, that's really tough to overcome. He's got to figure that out. Uh, sometimes I feel like even though he has elusive moves in the open field, he just wants to turn games into a track meet. He just wants to get the ball and go. He just wants to use his speed, which he doesn't need to do that. He's got the moves. Use them. So sometimes I feel like he tries to just take off when you don't need to do that. He just kind of throws himself into the pile. pile. <clears throat> he throws himself into the tackle when he's got the ability to do much more than that. <coughs> so he's a big play threat. I think he's going to be somebody who busts a lot of big plays at the next level. Somebody who's going to be a real pain. Somebody who's going to uh, 
turn 10-yard plays into 50-yard plays. But there are things that need to be fixed. There are some issues that hold him back. And I'm really worried about the fumbling thing, personally, because sometimes that doesn't go away no matter what you do. But I can definitely see a special final product. And at the very least, at the very least, he should be an exciting playmaker in the vein of, like, maybe a Darren Sproles. And I'm talking about the Darren Sproles on offense, by the way, just to be clear. Special teams, I don't know. I, I don't know about that. But the Darren Sproles you got on offense, it, it seems like it's going to be here a little bit. So I'd put a third-round value on Jalen Wright personally. You're going to need to probably coach him up for a year, try to work these issues out of his game, get him to play a little bit lower, help with his vision, uh, help with his cerebral feeling for playing the position, the fumbles, uh, the big one. But uh, I'd spend a third-round pick on him because the talent is pretty fantastic. He's fast. He's explosive. You don't find that every day. And he's only 21. All right. I will see you guys later. Go Hawks. More running backs coming later today, but uh, we are wrapping up the look at the best of the best. So I will see you guys soon. Let me know what you think of Jalen Wright and uh, what was this? Oh, yeah, Blake Corum. See you guys later.